Do we have Black Panther news? Do we have shoot dates starting? Do we have quotes? And most importantly, is Deadpool's marketing starting up? Yes, we do. This is Marvel Movie News. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's Marvel Movie News. Excelsior to you, our merry Marvelites. It has been a week. Last week was the saddest episode of oh, Marvel Movie News to date. Wasn't it? There were actual tears. Yeah, that we were was, saying bye to Matt last oh, week. It was hard. It was very hard. But this week we have news. We will fill the void that Matt left with lots of glorious geekdom, and only you guys can help us with that. So this is episode 156. We are coming to you live from Deadpool's chimichanga truck because we are gearing back up for the greatest cinematic achievement of all time. Uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> we are Marvel Movie News. We tell you why you should be as excited about all the studio's Marvel stuff as we are, and we fill you on all the details. So you can subscribe to us on iTunes. You can find us on Marvel Movie News. You can find us on YouTube.com slash Popcorn Talk Network. You can find us through Popcorn Talk's web website, PopcornTalkNetwork.com. Follow us on Twitter at Marvel News PTN or at the Popcorn Talk Network. And the Facebook, which we try to use, is Facebook.com slash Marvel News Show. Follow us, like us, and if you retweet while we're live, asking people to join us live, Aunt Manthony in the booth will retweet you. Oh, man. <laughs> that was Punisher's a mouthful. <laughs> man, this opening. It's the, the thing I like least. The news, what I like most. <laughs> yeah. Now, today we have glorious guests, but as always, we are joined by the ever effervescent Marquia McCarty. Where can they find you? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Marquia McCarty. That's M-A-R-K-E-I-A-M-C-C-A-R-T-Y. You'll notice she is now in the Banhammer chair, so you guys be nice in the live chat because she is watching always. Digital. I'm watching you. And we are joined by the lovely Sabina. Hey everyone, I'm Sabina Graves. You can uh, see me usually on Superhero News. You can find me on Twitter at Sabina has no R. <laughs> A lot of people always mistake me for Sabrina, so uh, there's that. that. I like it. I like it. <laughs> and where can I find you, sir? Hey, this is Anthony Rose. You can find me at Aunt Rose CEO on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all across the universe. I'm there. He's everywhere. He's watching. He's waiting. <laughs> and as always, Colt Badeau is tweeting live from the Star Jammer, keeping an eye out on news and gloriousness. And as Marquia noticed right before the show. Okay, okay, I'm gonna say this real quick because uh, when Koi sent me the rundown, Black Panther was first. I was like, oh, okay, cool. This this is nice. I like that we're gonna we're gonna continue Matt's legacy until you know, like Black Panther is I, uh, such and, such. Um, and then I I get the rundown mere seconds before we go. <laughs> And he has switched into Deadpool is first. Now, I'm not saying my favorite part about uh, Deadpool is the marketing, but it's close. <laughs> and so, unfortunately, as much as Black Panther and the standees, which we will talk about, are important, and I made mm -hmm. sure to slot out a good amount of time for the sake of Marquia. Deadpool. Okay. <laughs> Deadpool. Deadpool. Good God, Deadpool marketing is already off to a glorious start. <laughs> I am the most hype a little boy can be. Uh, I, 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 I just need to say that last year's marketing, or two years ago, whenever it was, the marketing was what made that movie what it was. Like, I, I would argue the the numbers it put up weren't just because, like, the tiny contingent of pre-Hot Topic Deadpool fans. It was because <laughs> they sold this movie in so many crazy ways. Yeah. Like, they actually made it look like a rom-com. They actually made it look like these insane things. Because it kind of was. Yeah, like, the didn't, heart of that movie was didn't love. did you have, like, one of those giant-sized Deadpool posters? Like, yeah. the, that one particular one with him with the gun? <laughs> I've got the gun one and I have the heart one that are both 60 feet large. Wow. <laughs> They're not currently hanging because I don't have that much space. <laughs> but, like, the idea of the marketing uh, being that much of an influence, I would argue since Cloverfield, this was the most influential marketing campaign. Because it really took the whole viral marketing plus comedy plus, like, they just let Deadpool be in a suit. Like, like Ryan Reynolds just talked at a camera and it was gold. And yeah. how do you save money on an indie except for like put a guy in one suit and talk for days? That's true. <laughs> at one point he put on a hat and it was a different commercial. Like that <laughs> one. Movie. So uh, I think the marketing is very important. I think it changes the way we shape movies. I think it's it's an underappreciated art. Like cutting a trailer is cutting a 60 second or two and a half minute movie. You really have to know what your market like market and audience are. So the marketing is gearing up. Now we're gonna start off with the poster they released. This is the Thanksgiving uh, poster which is just glorious. Uh, this looks like <laughs> an 80s Christmas movie poster. Like, to me, this is... It's based off that Norman Rockwell piece. Yeah. yeah. yeah from back in the day. Nice. <laughs> this reminds me of, like, Chevy Chase. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's that. the comedy. That's the glory. Like, what do, you, what do you guys think of the poster? I, I like it. It is like the Chevy Chase mix. It was like some Home Alone, like, Kevin McAllister yeah. grew up and became Deadpool. So, I and, and to add to the marketing, like, the, what I thought was genius and funny was... 
I had so many friends that I heard adults being like, oh no, I shouldn't have brought my kids to this school. <laughs> but it's because they marked it as like an intergenerational, like oh. you didn't know, like you said, it was just like so many different things coming at you and it made everybody want to go. And even though when they walked out, they're like, ooh, it's not quite for kids, but it was still hilarious. I'm glad they went. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it. I love that Deadpool's so meta that not only did Stanley make the teaser, he's in the freaking poster. poster. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Stan Lee on the top oh. right, <laughs> hanging off to the side. And like Colossus in the bottom corner peeking in, you've got yep. the whole. It looks cast. like he's taking the, the selfie of that whole situation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, Colossus like, got this. Yeah, he got this. <laughs> yeah, the thing that I like about it is that it reminds me. I mean, like if you go to like the ninety nine cent store or something like that, and they have like those cards, like those Christmas yeah. cards. Yeah, it's like if I ran into something like this, it would be the ultimate double take. <laughs> like, like, what? Like, what? And we've even got like Ranjit back. Like this, this is the <laughs> cast. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and and we've new cast members. We've got returning cast members. Like this is, I mean, I, I'm excited. Domino makes an appearance for the like the third like official image. Cables here. Al's there. <laughs> you guys should do like a popcorn talk, like a Marvel movie news, like fan contest, and have everybody recreate that poster for Thanksgiving with their friends. You that would be awesome. That's but fun. you got to hashtag Marvel movie news. That's true. This man, yeah. this is why he's CEO. He, he's got ideas. <laughs> yeah. I'd like the internet. Listen to him. Uh, so I'd also like to show you guys the very first bit of viral marketing. This is an actual magazine you can read online. You can actually read a, a, a menu. You can read about recipes that Deadpool has suggested for you. You can read about like warming tips. You can hilarious. Good God, I'm excited. Uh, it's it's almost painful. Um, I can't even begin to express how glad I am this is back because this was like a year leading up to Deadpool. Yeah. They had the weirdness. So starting in November, movie comes out in the summer. I've got eight months, and you're gonna deal with me for eight months of just pure <laughs> zeal. Um, I, I'm so stoked. Pick up good housekeeping. I never thought I'd say that sentence, but here we are. Uh, and they also yeah. released a, an official image of Josh Brolin, um, which is right here, um, which is Rob Liefeld, the creator of Deadpool, just broing out with Brolin. It'd be so cool to create a character that became so iconic and then, like, meet him. Yeah, 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 yeah right? <laughs> like, yeah. The, how or surreal how about, must that be? Exactly. Yeah. He's meeting his creator. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, then you got the Frankenstein yeah. aspect and the Victor yeah. Frankenstein. Yeah. Like, there's so... <laughs> oh, I, I love that. Um, and I just, I think it, it, it's going to show to the audience that the creators were so involved. Yeah. Like, yeah. Liefeld's clearly investing, like, everyone's into the character. Uh, he said, Liefeld said, quote, Mr. Josh Brolin cannot be more perfect for the role. He is amazing and outstanding, and you'll no doubt be as giddy as I was when watching him portray Cable. His commitment to becoming Cable goes beyond his physical transformation. He found the voice that fans will go crazy about. Ryan is Deadpool and Josh is Cable. Look out, world, this is going to be nuts. Yes, please. So, I mean, this image, it's everything I need. The poster, the glory. And speaking of posters. Oh. Ooh. Mm. Black ooh. Panther. Yes. Released yes. A yes. world. Now, oh I had to start with Deadpool because it's my first show in this seat. But I have to give full credit to this Black Panther campaign. I want to let Marquia just... Just go nuts. I'm not even going to talk. Just Marquia, okay, tell the people. With, with these posters, these character posters, I mean, the just the feeling that is released for each and every one of these. And like right now, uh, what we have up is we have Black Panther. And it's Chadwick Bosman at his most Black Pantherist. I'm feeling the T'Challa on here. It's like the... And he's like the angst and the conflict. He's looking down at these hands and he's like, what will these hands rot? What have these hands rot? What will these hands do? Okay. It's like, this is a conflicted king or, you know, king to be. And <laughs> I'm all about this. Do we have all of the character posters or just this one? Oh, oh, we got him. Oh, Do we yeah. have all of them? Okay. <laughs> okay, so Angela <laughs> Bassett. <laughs> Angela Bassett. And you have her as a, a Romanda right here. And, and oh, it's, it's statuesque. It's Angela Bassett. She's looking off into the distance, and she's having a contemplative moment, and she is decked out in her jewelry and her finery, and I am all about this queen mother. Yeah, is, oh, the, the, the posters, I mean, they're amazing. I cannot wait. They're instantly iconic. Like yes. I, love, I love that. Like the moment you see it, you're like, "Oh, that's exactly what it needed to be." And it also like tells you so much about the story without talking. And the yeah. characters, and it makes you like want to know more about these people that we're seeing. Yeah. Yes, it's like they're automatically um, multidimensional for you. Like they're they're more than just one thing. Uh, we might have only had those. Uh, those two. Those, I mean, we did right. okay. those, but oops. there's. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Aunt Anthony, did you say something? Oh, sorry, I was just saying it was, it was only those two. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, there's Shuri. There is uh, one with Shuri, so look out for that one. They have one with uh, Nakia, so you have her with her chakrams. Yes. 
Um, I'm just called chakrams. I'm sure they're called <laughs> chakrams. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's part of the Xenoverse for me now, anyway. So uh, the chakrams made of vibranium for me. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we have that. Uh, and uh, I'm sure we have a Koei. Uh, do, do we have the standee, right now. Uh, M. Anthony? Do we have the picture of the standee? I don't believe we do. Okay, I'll find okay. that while Marquia is hype. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, but these character posters, I rec- I recommend you seeing them. Oh, here they are. Oh, yeah. they're there. Yeah. 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 There they are. So, uh, yeah, we have a Koei, uh, or I'm probably mispronouncing that, but O-K-O-Y-E. So we have her, and she's oh, she's head of security. She's has her blade in her hand, looking off into the distance. I just love the palette that they chose with this, uh, the shadowiness. I want to see this huge, mm-hmm. like in Times Square, because it deserves that. And yeah. they're almost chess-like in many ways, too, like chess pieces, you know, like you have oh. the guard and you have like the queen and stuff. Nice. Yes. I like the way you think, Sabina. Yeah. I, I just love how regal yeah. every image feels. Like the, there's mm-hmm. a reverence in the way they're they're shooting it. There's a reverence in the characters. There's an importance to this movie that is reflected in posters. And posters are usually like, especially with Marvel, uh, their last thing. Like I feel like when posters <laughs> try to Marvel, I'm always like, hey, look, someone brought a Polaroid. Yeah. Like they're really invested in these posters. And I really respect that. I love that. Yeah, exactly. they talked about like, I, I saw an interview or I read something Chad and Baldwin was talking about just even picking like his dialect for the character and yeah. how much thought went into that and he was just mm-hmm. like Wakanda has never been colonized he's like so I can't come into it with an American or a British accent or whatever because then that would take away from what we've built so right. um, I'm excited I mean I even I, my Black Panther costume hasn't come in today but I, I wore my Swahili shirt my, <laughs> my, my beast in Swahili sweater but uh, I, I just think it's, it's just going to be an amazing, amazing time. And I'm excited just to see what everybody wears to the movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. It's going to be like be coming out. to America meets a Royal Regal Ball. Is there an <laughs> NBA uh, All-Star Weekend, too? The so, Wiz. Yeah. <laughs> in the Emerald City. <laughs> it's going to be amazingly glorious. So I'm excited. Yeah, but um, all these character posters. And, yeah, we have everybody. We have Eric Killmonger. Uh, uh, we have Andy Serkis as uh, Claw. Circus. <laughs> uh, as Claw. Um, I recommend looking at these if you haven't had a chance to um, online just yet. But um, a... and there it also, is. talking yeah. about there marketing. I, I found it. I hunted. Um, yeah. To me, this shows not only the characters, like the regal, the power, but I also love that they use the architecture that looks like it's present in the movie in the standee. Mm-hmm. Like, that shows yeah. an extra level of detail that I think Marvel's, like, picking up on. Like, I got to give Fox credit. Their marketing, at segue back, <laughs> is some of the best in, in the studio system. And I think Marvel is upping their game to keep up with these studios that are also in Marvel movies. Like, this is beautiful. I, and yeah. I really think that that's, the bar needs to be set. Black Panther, that looks like something out of Wakanda. And yes. it looks like yeah. Black Panther. Yes, it looks like perhaps the vibranium that they're mining out of the ground uh, it's it's so many levels uh for itunes listeners it's um the standees are the the what 3d movie posters yeah they're, that they're you like see. a cardboard cut just out, in case someone 3D. didn't know yeah uh, but yeah, look out for those. It looks so good. Because you guys see it in the February. real life, please tag us on Insta. Yeah, send it. I want to go and find one and take pictures in front of it. <laughs> so yeah, we just wanted to give you guys some. Find uh, one. I'm gonna take it. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of Wakanda missing in the world. Marquia's just gonna have stashes of T'Challas and characters stashed in her home. Um, so the standee's gorgeous. The posters are gorgeous. Marketing is a huge part of how movies get made. So I'm glad they're up in their game. And. Speaking of marketing, the Runaways banner has been released. Um, uh, I'm so intrigued by this show. This show comes out at the end of the month. It is Who's First Foray into Marveldom. It is a very little adaptation, and this looks like characters from the comics to me. Yeah, no, totally. Like, this looks yeah. like they were just, like, made 3D and put on a poster. Like, I've actually seen four episodes of Runaways, and um, it's really good. It actually reminds me of um, Real House Kids of Marvel. Because uh, it's more of like a teen like drama fun. and a uh, family drama, and it reminded me of Hot Fuzz a bit in in That's how fun. like you have these figures mm-hmm. that are going after the greater good, and the kids are kind of like resisting of that and mm-hmm. being like, you know, our parents are making choices that they think will protect us, but might be harming other people, and they're not down with that. Mm-hmm. And so it's mm-hmm. really exciting to see that play out, especially with like today's political climate. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Smart. yeah, I think it, I think it's going to be a fantastic series, and I love this banner. I mean, it definitely showcases each and every character, everybody from uh, Gertie to um, Carolina, and it's. There's it's, a clever tail I even in there, love this, too. Yeah, yeah. Was it the, the, t- one? the tail. Oh, the lace's tail. Oh, I missed so, that. Yeah, that was my, there's I love this little, yep, lace makes an yeah. appearance. But yeah. a budgetary uh, appropriate appearance. 
Um, <laughs> I also think that Runaways does a really good job of, of mixing up not just Molly. the the mm-hmm. lore from the comics but if they're they're branching out like they're yeah. actually like so they were they were talking uh with uh, ryan sands who plays jeffrey wilder and he talks about um so we're a lot more fleshed out we're definitely not one-dimensional villains i'm really excited because i think that's what i love most about seeing the characters that i love come to life it's seeing what remains faceful what's familiar that's always fun but seeing how these new artists the new writers the new production designers the new costume designers interpret these characters in their worlds and bring them in a present day so I love that. I love yeah. that we're playing with the source material, but we're not married to it. No, yeah. totally. And it's a lot more grounded, like, from the costuming to even the effects in it. You know, it's not like every episode builds up to an action set piece, necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, it just sort of, like, tiptoes around this mystery, and it intrigues you, and you get to, like, get into these characters' heads and see why they are clashing and, you know, getting into some Marvel madness. And the exec producers even talked about the power set. They said uh, how Molly got this ability, why she has it, is a mystery that we're going to be pursuing right. and unpacking in the series. So mm-hmm. it gave us an opportunity for her to go on a journey we might not have otherwise had. So I think that's really cool to not just, like, he got bit by a spider, we're moving on. <laughs> like, it's like, if you have a show, you got more time to flesh it out. Yeah, and especially being that it's a teen drama, so showing that development and how mm-hmm. they adapt and how they mm-hmm. kind of deal with that new thing entering their world. Because what I've... What I feel like I've noticed in certain Marvel films, like you're saying, it's like they get the power, they move on. They never address what it means to go through that power and how it right. affects them and how it, you know, the world around them. So that's... It's not a montage. Yeah. 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 It's not yeah. an 80s montage yeah. at all times. And I, and I think there's pros and cons to TV versus movies. Like cons being you got to stretch that budget. But pros yeah. being you can tell a story. So if you're invested in the humanness of the characters and like in the characters themselves, then you can... We should make that work. And Runaway seems like the perfect foray for Hulu. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I'm going to really enjoy the nuance because uh, think about it. You have a lot of super powered individuals up there and then you have Chase and Alex. So Mm -hmm. it's like, I wonder if they're going to dwell into that at all. Yeah. And it's interesting how many characters they're going to be juggling and like how the show is going to tie in. 17. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's 17 series regs, not just like co-stars, guest stars. That's a lot of TV. Yeah. Um, And and Gertie's not super powered, but she has a dinosaur. So it kind of counts. That's a power. That is a power. Chris (laughs) Pratt was super powered in Jurassic World because he had raptors. This totally is the same. This totally (laughs) plays. Oh, wow. Star-Lord had raptors. She has a raptor. Um, and they're t- uh, in talking about where the season heads at the end, they said they're doing an excellent job of pacing these things out. So at season's end, we're just beginning. You don't know where we're going, and even though that we can sound like a slow season, trust me, it's not. These things take time to be revealed, and you might think we're going somewhere, then there's a U-turn, then there's a sharp right turn, then we go somewhere else. But it all makes sense, and it's very well paced. Yes. Um, right. I love that they plotted out the season. They made a made a show Bible, it sounds like. It sounds like they did the Breaking Bad thing, and they're like, run, 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 uh, run, run, run. Uh. So yeah. mm-hmm. that's what TV should be. So I'm really excited to see that play out right. So. Yeah, and I wonder how far they're going to go in the series for just the first season. Yeah. Are they going to go there? Or will it be, okay, the early we'll second almost season go there. Hanger. Yeah, second season. It definitely breathes, and like the pacing gets you interested in all of these different components, especially since they added more of the parents backstory to or I mean well concurrent to like what's happening with the kids nice yeah, very much wow. like how the OC was like both the parents and like the teens <laughs> that's not a dig to like the no you no know, no it's, it, it's, it was actually a really good strength of that show because you actually cared about all the characters in their own way even if you disagreed with them and yeah no yeah. Um, other people have uh, called it Marvel's OC so <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's fine it's fine <laughs> I mean we don't have that tone and the more we mix it up the better we are off so speaking mm-hmm. of television Daredevil season three starts filming hey. now. That's exciting. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> so we show. know it's got to be the born again storyline. Yeah. I mean, that's oh, what yeah. they, they, they all set but told us. Up. I mean, we have Kingpin back in everything. So yeah. I'm just wondering if Karen Page is going to, Survive. if she's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's been Let's through say. some stuff. Yeah. And whatever she goes through starting Friday Ooh. on Netflix is That's Punisher. True. Uh, yeah. I can't wait for Daredevil. I really love that show. I really, like, you can tell what character pulls you in most when you watch Defenders. And, like, Daredevil always was the one I was like, that's everything. Uh, <laughs> so I, I can't wait for that show. And I think that we're going to have an interesting thing. We'll get to this more later, but the Disney mess. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. That's a whole thing later on in the show, but I'm curious how, with these shows gearing up, that's going to play out. Uh, speaking of gearing up, Iron Fist 2 starts filming next month, and I'm assuming Finn Jones has been training uh, ever since, uh, and with the better job he did with the Defenders, I am much more excited for Iron Fist Season 2 than I thought I'd be after finishing Iron Fist Season 1. Okay. Um, I, I, I think cool. that... Well, I, I think that I, I trust Marvel, and I think Scott Buck's not on it. I think that he impressed me with Defenders, and I think that... If the distraction of the fights aren't like they were in season one, I could like the show, but I won't know 
until a while. So I'm holding out. I'm holding out. I'm hoping. Right. I'm, I'm optimistic. Keep you the know, faith. Yeah. 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 Keep it. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm looking forward to? Them having some Daughters of the Dragon action in it. Because we know that Missy uh, uh, Sissick, mm-hmm. uh, so oh. name, her last name right, uh, that she is reprising her role as Misty Knight in yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. So we have her and Jennifer. Uh, and so I'm like. It'll feel like a fuller show. Like yeah. And less, then, of course, we already know, like, intrigue. there'll be some Luke Cage action yeah. in there because they'll have to have that. So I'm looking forward to that and how they'll flesh that out. Mm-hmm. I'm still a, a bit hesitant oh, when totally it comes understand. to Iron Fist, but I'm I'm willing for them to draw me on to their side. Right. And, yeah. and Luke Cage season two has Iron Fist in it as well. We've seen exactly. pictures. I think season two is either wrapped or almost. So mm-hmm. they're giving us a lot of chances to like Finn Jones. They're they're putting them everywhere. So well, we can to like, like this version to like of Iron, Fist. Iron Fist. Yeah, this version. Yeah. yeah. So it's we'll see. Uh, speaking of filming, Walton Goggins wrapped his last day of Ant Man and the Wasp uh, with a photo saying, "Quote my last day on Ant Man. Peyton and his badass cameraman Peter let Augustus shoot my close up. Marvel he promised I was in focus. Uh, <laughs> this is adorable. That's his son. His Aww. kid just like shooting the last shot of his movie. Like how like what more family yeah, do you want right. from a studio <laughs> yeah. than like a kid shooting his dad on set? Uh, yeah." Love that. Funny. So cute. And I love Walton Goggins, so just seeing him uh, on a Marvel set makes me really happy. And we still don't know much about his character. No, we don't know much about the movie, which I love. Yeah, Mm. so, I mean, it's already, like, his last day on set, so, oh my gosh. (laughs) But it still feels like it shot about four times as long as the X-Men movie that wrapped before it started filming. So, uh, (laughs) I'm pretty excited about Ant-Man and the Wasp. I'm really excited the fact that the Wasp sounds like as much of the lead as Ant-Man as per the title. And the first movie's biggest flaw for me wasn't the comedy, wasn't the tone. I loved those things. It was that the whole movie felt like it was like, hey, she can do this better, but he should... Maybe he should do it, but I was like, but why not just let her do it? Do it. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm really excited. Sense. The movie to... would have been done in like. Yeah. It was, <laughs> like, did you guys have the same problem? Yeah. Same, man? yeah no, think... for sure. I was like, she can do all these things and like has been training her whole life for it. Why? Okay, bye. It was like seven lines of dialogue to yeah. write out a bad plot point. So yeah. the sequel yeah. sounds like they're like, all right, we listened. Yeah. We're going to let her be the Wasp finally. But they mansplained the action movie. Yeah, it was weird for me. So I'm excited for the Wasp more than I... I'm actually more excited for the sequel than I was initially excited for Ant-Man. Uh, once Edgar Wright left, I was pretty bummed. So yeah, same. I liked Ant-Man, but I'm more excited for this one. Yeah. Uh, speaking of movies that may or may not exist, Stan Lee thinks a Black Widow movie is inevitable. Um, at Supernova Comic Con in Brisbane, Australia, Comic-Con.com talked with Stan Lee, and he said, quote... One day, there will be a Black Widow movie. Now, the internet lost their minds with this news. Everyone this is tweeted, not new I know. news, it's though. Not that's the thing. We so, all want a Black Widow movie. Like, and, and he also said like, one day. It's like, that's Yeah, probably they already said true. this like, back in 2016. Five years ago. And, and then, yeah, where they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll get around to this. It's just we have a lot of other things on our plate. Yeah, kind of thing. so everyone asked us to comment on this. I wanted to just put it in the rundown mm-hmm. for the sake of, like, it's true, Stan Lee thinks there'll be a, uh, and there will be a Black Widow movie. It doesn't mean soon. It doesn't mean necessarily Scarlett Johansson. It doesn't mean anything except for like, well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so don't get excited yet. I want a Black Widow movie as much as anybody else. I personally don't necessarily want a comedy because that character doesn't feel like a comedy yeah. to me. <laughs> Not at all. I guess I agree with Taika on that. I it's know, kind of like that SNL skit where they tried to make it into like a romantic comedy. Oh, I haven't, I haven't seen the latest <sighs> SNL yet. No, this was like, Last year, I think, or a okay. year or two ago, they did a skit that was Black Widow as like a romantic comedy, and it was, oh, it was making fun um, of. Scarjo was on. Hosting. Yeah, she was. Oh, okay. she was so it was her as that. Black yeah. Widow as a rom com. It was cute. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, that's really cute. But that, yeah. I agree. Like the tone it would of feel Black like Widow. Just that extended. Yeah. Honestly, I loved Thor, but I don't think that tone works for Black Widow. She's like grew up in the Red Room. Like she had like the most traumatic life. Like if you make that a comedy, it's like insulting the character for me. I wanted to ask you guys, uh, I was wondering to myself too, like what kind of, like what would the story be for her? Like what take would it be? I would love a Red Room movie. I'd love a political mm-hmm. espionage thriller. I would love something that felt more like David Fincher directed it. I think we're totally were... not getting that with Red oh, Sparrow. No. <laughs> yeah, like that movie exists. <laughs> it looks exactly like, like Jennifer Lawrence, Lawrence as, as Black, Black Widow. Black Widow is pretty much what that movie seems like. Sparrow for Room and swap it out. Yeah, like basically I would love a girl with a dragon tattoo with Black Widow. No, for sure. Yeah, like that just tone and grittiness would be amazing. Cool. Well, I'm I'm open mm-hmm. uh, for it because um, I thought uh, Taika Waititi did such a great job with Thor yeah. Ragnarok. So I'm I'm open for different genres for this movie. It doesn't have to be a gritty crime thriller for me necessarily. I I I'm open to it being something else. Yeah. Either way, mm-hmm. I want it. 
Yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of like Atomic Blonde, how Atomic Blonde was. Ooh, yeah. that'd yeah. be fun. Like how the fighting style was in that. At least have that. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, the fighting's got to be like that's so important because she's not super powered per se. So yeah. the fights have to be something. I want to see some bruises on her, you know. Yeah, you want to see her like yeah. feel everything. Yeah. Um, and in movie tiny tiny news, Gambit is getting the production designer from True Grit. Now, I only bring this up because Gambit is the movie that, uh, along with Venom, which is our next story, that I am the sole loudest cheerleader on. Uh, I think Gambit with Channing Tatum is going to be great. I think Venom is going to be extraordinary. And Gambit keeps giving us things to hopefully put our minds at ease. The production designer from True Grit won an Oscar for that film. He's works with the Coen brothers all the time. Uh, Roger Deakins, my favorite DP, and him team up a lot. This guy makes things gorgeous and layered, and he invests, and there's money there. So for me, showing they're putting so much money in a great production designer shows they're not just trying to make a movie. They're yeah. not just trying to keep the rights. They're not just like throwing... Like, if you get the production designer that works with the Coen brothers, you're yeah. going to make a movie, not a, a summer movie. Yeah. So this, to me, was a much bigger news story than a lot of the things we've heard. The cast is great. That production designer. Um, what do you guys think about the Gambit movie? No, I, I agree with that. I'm, I'm, I'm a film director myself, so it's all. It comes down to your DP, your director, mm -hmm. and your, your crew. And if you're investing that type of weight into it, you're really going for a film. Yeah. For sure, like you're mm -hmm. getting this tone down, and kind of like you can already kind of see the pitch there with that look and that character with you know Channing's gotten a lot of heat for being Gambit and he's like I'm I'm going all in with this and I'm mm. going to put the work in and prove that I'm gonna make a movie that's gonna be up there hopefully with the likes of like Logan clearly mm. right. yeah Fox is really investing in their solo films like they're really yeah. keeping those like mutant movies going uh, the team movies also but I, <laughs> I really think uh, Gambit's gonna hopefully surprise people um, if I'm wrong I'm wrong but I really think Channing Tatum's gonna with how invested he is I think yeah. he's gonna make a great gambit and over the years he's just improved so much as like an actor and like a force in the entertainment are industry. you saying his pinnacle wasn't um, um magic mike <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're well, saying I we're mean, confirming that stripping and nuance <laughs> hell, of a film. hell of a film and he was vulnerable fox catcher <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody catch uh, logan lucky yeah i liked yeah. a lot oh that was great and logan lucky he did amazing yeah. as well. okay. yeah he's more than just abs <laughs> um, I also yeah our dude Che Tates Che Tates Che Tates uh, I'm also in uh, films that people aren't as excited for as I am going to change it into Venom which is set to have a setting in Asia. Now, this is the first bit of news to me that does not fall into the, this is obviously going to be the Lethal Protector storyline because that's mm -hmm. almost entirely in San Francisco. It involves like Venom and Spider-Man being like, you be good, I'll be good, okay, bye. Uh, and this sounds more like they have a broader story for the symbiote because they're looking for a casting call that seeks out, quote, villagers without modern haircuts. So that could either mean remote area in Asia, that could mean um, flashback, that could mm. mean any number of things. But to me, that says symbiote backstory. That mm -hmm. says more about mm. the that world. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really interesting if it was flashback. Like mm -hmm. they kind of tweak the origin story a bit so it's not, you know, symbiote comes and attaches on Spider-Man and now he's obsessed with Spider-Man. It could be <laughs> maybe, you know, remote area and then the symbiote is something else unformed but yet horrific mm -hmm. because it'll still look like the thing from life right ah, which is <laughs> was the best backdoor pilot they could have done the fact oh, they didn't man. sony made a movie with the venom symbiote and didn't use it hey you know it might you guys still been, got it might you have been the prequel right yeah. yeah it might have been because it it well i don't want to should i uh, it looks just like it looks it, <laughs> it's very possible that it made it to earth yes so. And it looks like Venom. And yeah. and I think the three main Venom origins are either A, Secret Wars, which is, you know, um, what I think Avengers 4 is going to be, and that would be amazing, but the rights issues. Um, the Moon uh, animated series Venom origin, or the Ultimate Edition, wherein there's a, a suit made by Peter Parker's father to cure cancer. If they go with the modern Ultimate Universe, which is a lot of the uh, foundation of the MCU, that would be the most jarring for Venom fans, but probably mm. the easiest to tell. Like, uh, like, we made this suit to fix stuff, and now it's evil. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's trickier because it doesn't have anything to do with space, but also that saves you a whole movie of space. So yeah. I personally want them to go the animated series route because there's not going to be a Secret Wars movie. But as long as Venom is, is, is Eddie Brock and, or, or Flash, but as long yeah. as he feels like Venom, mm -hmm. that's all I care about. And yeah. they could be going for that uh, horror, like, subgenre where, like, people go into, like, a rural wilderness and, like, mm -hmm. come back with something attached or, you know, like... Ooh. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, like those, like, uh, nice. like... Is it uh, Ruins and Ruins? Oh, shoot, I forget the movie. It's a horror oh, movie. Oh, The Ruins. The yeah, Ruins yeah. and stuff are mm. like 
things go down and like oh. people don't come back right <laughs> yeah that just hit a dim bell for me yeah, i yeah. did see that <laughs> i remember i, I watched a lot of movies scared. yes <laughs> yeah um so as long as they do like an agent venom kind of a thing mm -hmm. i would be totally happy with that i want to see tom hardy vulnerable and also uh perhaps you know disfigured in some way due to you know the military or like holding up his country in some way and then the symbiote helping him out with that so then the symbiote helped but the symbiote's kind of evil and uh, then just let it take it from there how cool is it we have like four completely different arcs of venom that we could have like yeah, the agent mm -hmm. venom's another one i didn't even think of like those three plus agent venom There's i really like agent venom there's but of course it's not eddie brock but you know. right but that doesn't mean they're making it doesn't movies. matter they're good, they're so good there's a lot it. of venom this could be mm -hmm. and that's why there's so much potential for this starting the shared universe or making more of a shared universe because there's so much um tangent to go over tomorrow kevin feige said that avengers infinity war is emotional he's talking to collider he said there's something very special about those movies that it's happening every day on set it's not just the crew that feels it or me that feels it. it's all the cast we're all mega stars in their own right yet feel privileged to be doing what they're doing every day joe and anthony russo handling it two movies at the same time in an unprecedented fashion Mm. These movies are gonna be crazy. Yeah, like, everyone will die. Everyone dies. Everyone's gonna die. <laughs> everyone will die. Mark Ruffalo just. But like the idea that yeah. it's it's two movies simultaneously, and I hear that the third one is more of a wrap up, and the fourth one is like this next start, which makes sense, and why they mm. changed the title and everything else. But the fact they're filming them simultaneously, and you have that many incredible people on set at once, like the energy on that must set must be insane. Yeah. Like, I, I couldn't be more excited. What are your thoughts on uh, Infinity War, Anthony, like, just in general? In general, I'm excited for it. Like, I, I read some articles about what it was like, everybody's going to die, and this mm -hmm. is what's going to happen there. And then I yeah. was thinking about just the amount of people on set, and how yeah. do you manage that? So I'm thinking from, like, the production side, is like, you're managing, like, a lot of egos. So in the press, I'm like, oh, yeah, everybody's getting along, and it's kumbaya, but you're managing a lot of stuff. Like, a lot of egos, a lot of requests, a lot of... How do we make this work? Or if somebody's going through a difficult scene, but then this person is going through, you know, this, how do you keep both yeah, and of them? And everyone not seeing like the whole script. Exactly. And, yeah. How do you keep Ooh. it under wraps and, you know, not tell one actor what's going on here? Because that's the standard director trick. It's like, we're going to tell you this is going on and not tell you this emotional thing is going to happen on over that. But your again. motivations this, and stakes this, are this, this high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm excited just to see where it goes. I mean, overall, I just be happy. I'm, I'm just happy to see a good movie. Well, so. I mean, they only gave Tom mm -hmm. Holland like six pages of the script. Because, like, Tom Holland's <laughs> in interviews is always like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like nobody got the full script, like you're saying. Yeah. And that, plus the amount of production that goes into making this big of a movie, but times two. Like, Kevin Feige, like, I, I can't imagine the stress and money he's under. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a lot going on. Um, yeah. And Paul Bettany talked about the Infinity War trailer, which we have yet to see officially, um, saying that, quote, it's badass. It'll be out. Everyone will love it. In true Paul Bettany fashion, but said with a much more clever accent. Uh, I... I can't wait. Like, I have no idea what it's going to be. The trailer? The Comic-Con trailer was... Insane. Yeah. Like, the yeah. Comic-Con footage was incredible. Uh, but I also kind of feel a little bit trolled by the Comic-Con stuff. Uh, those who know, know why. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. My feelings have gone up and down on this. I'm a little bit on like the down right now where I'm just like, I'm so just looking forward to like more movies like Black Panther and Captain Marvel that I kind of just want to get Infinity War like over with. Because it's, it's this huge it's behemoth. So, it's, yeah. Yeah, you know? like, it's overwhelming. It's, there. <laughs> it's like this huge asteroid and we know it's going to hit the planet. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going to die, but it's like, there's all it's these other And then Hulk's going to be left like, uh, all my friends are dead, like in Hulk form, like the little dinosaur <laughs> picture. Yeah. It I mean, it, it's super intriguing that they're, they even went for this, much less how big it got, because they didn't know what these movies were going to be by the time it got here. And, and I'm yeah. really curious how Justice League does, because it's a culmination of four movies. This is the culmination of, by the time the fourth one comes out, 22 movies. Um, yeah. So it's just, it's so many storylines ending and so much excitement. Yeah. And I, I just want the trailer. High. That um, bar is very high. Yeah. But to rewind real quick, you brought up Tom Holland. I saw this thing on the internet. I don't he know if it was recent. Again. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Uh, oh, okay. It was this recent thing where he was, I don't know if it's recent or not, actually. He was like, oh, hanging out with Uncle Thor, waiting for my two dads. And then, Aww. like, his next one was uh, Tony and Chris. And then he was like, there they are. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he That's just fun. broke his nose on the set of uh, the, the, his new movie, Chaos Walking, or something. He just, he's the third time he's broken his nose on set, that poor Jeez. That poor, awesome <laughs> Spider-Man. Um, okay, so we have two big news stories left. Um, one of them is the live chats losing their mind. Yes, I know about Morbius. I want to leave time for Morbius. I'm intrigued by Morbius. But first, mm. Punisher drops Friday. Um, I haven't seen a piece of it. I know nothing of it. 
Um, the reviews are in, so we're going to talk Punisher, we're going to talk Disney Madness, we're going to talk Morbius. Yes, let's talk yeah. Punisher movies, too. Let's talk Punisher movies. Yeah, uh, so fun. So, Punisher is a character that's been through a lot, as Marquia experienced on Monday, uh, when she did yeah. Screen Junkies, talking about all the all the Punisher forays. Yes. Um, the reviews for the show sound like it is either amazing or awful. I've read a lot of ones and a lot of tens. I yeah. haven't seen anyone kind of like it. I think that sort of just depends on like how people are feeling about things that are going on in the real life that's kind of like creating this like vast like black and white like split. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Bernthal is just like such a beast as the Punisher mm-hmm. that everyone wants to see more of it. I think he's becoming quickly everyone's favorite Punisher. Yeah, well, I mean... Think about it. Who would be your favorite Punisher besides John Berenthal? Tom I Jane, mean, Tom. I love. Yeah, Thomas Jane tends to be, you know. Dirty people's... Laundry is like. Oh, Dirty Laundry, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> the most accurate right? one. I gotta yeah. give I gotta give Tom Jane the credit. He's just like the movie was good. It could have been great, and then Dirty Laundry was great. So I think it's just like I think Andrew Garfield with the right writing would have been an amazing Spider Man pun intended, but uh, <laughs> Punisher yeah. didn't get as much leeway because the time wasn't right. Right. Uh, and then, I mean, obviously uh, we had an amazing amazing Punisher war zone. But, I like, really enjoyed that movie. Oh, it's so fun and crazy it's and lets ultra you violent and, and it just grabs hold of the comic book and grabs you by the throat. <laughs> like, there's actually one scene where um, he actually punches his fist through a guy's head. It's mm-hmm. like that doesn't happen, <laughs> yeah. except for the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like um, a Stallone oh, Alexia movie. Alexander, she rocked that movie. So yeah, much. I'm happy that all these like men are leaving Hollywood, so finally she can stop being like blacklisted and get to make a movie again that's in this genre. That would be amazing. And I just really enjoyed uh, Dominic West as Jigsaw, like um, Jigsaw and his relationship with um, his brother Billy. Mm-hmm. They were crazy homicidal like and i just needed to see what they do next yeah they you know, kind of always thing. like want more and more and more and that's like a really fun way to make that like brutal i don't know punisher's so hard to get the tone right that's why yeah. the comics also, yeah. also fall apart like right. he did a really... crossover with archie before he was frankenstein Nobody knows oh, punisher, yeah. fit. punisher was frankenstein for a while he also oh, did a that's cover... right he was, <laughs> he was uh, frank ca- frank and castle or frank something like that with m and m ones there's an yes, m and m punisher there crossover. is there is no there way to write punisher consistently Oh my I own it and it's weird. about that. <laughs> so that wow. that said, uh, it's really hard to get the tone right of Punisher, as per all of our examples of what? <laughs> uh, the reviews so far, Variety said John Bernthal's seamless performance is as the non superpowered vigilante Frank Castle and showrunner Steve Lightfoot sharp conscious storytelling. Punisher approaches the high points of Jessica Jones by introducing a changed, deadly character and telling a story in one piece of an unjust whole. Despite first impressions, Frank Castle is in fact a marginalized figure because he's a veteran. I like that it sounds like they're leaning into Frank's problems with more time to feel awful about Frank. Yeah. Because that was what Daredevil did so right. Yes. Yeah, he's damaged. He's He's so broken. He's damaged. And and that's what I think they need to, like, this is a story that's really tricky right now. Yeah, and it's exploring, Mm. like, the complexities of that, for sure. Right, like, gun violence is not acceptable, so making a hero (laughs) that is really hard. So the fact that they're leaning into, like, his brokenness... Uh, the most positive review I read, uh, Forbes, when Guardians of the Galaxy hit theaters in 2014, many praised it as the best MCU film to date, not the least of which being because it chose not to tie itself to existing mythology. It is within this prism we can praise the TV side's next latest series, The Punisher. That is a high praise to put it next to Guardians. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's everyone since Guardians has been like, it's the next Guardians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to call Punisher that is super intriguing. Um, Are they bringing Vincent D'Onofrio back? Uh, I don't think he's in Punisher because I haven't heard anything. But I don't. Uh, I haven't heard anything either. I mean, I absolutely love oh him in Punisher. He is, he is, Daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. He is That's amazing. prison scene. I yes. love the, oh. Yes. Oh. I love that you just called Daredevil season two. Marvel's <laughs> Punisher, Punisher Kingpin and Daredevil. No, <laughs> it was. I did. It was. Just yeah. like moved his head yeah. down, like, yes. like effectively, it's Iron Man. Yeah. Was Iron Man Thos? Iron Man Iron Man Thos. Iron Man Thos. Iron Man Thos. Yeah. Uh, and then the last review I got down here, IGN said, Marvel's The Punisher begins its journey in brutal fashion. Frank Castle introduction is a bloody reminder of how vicious a character the Punisher can be, but that's just the opening few minutes. The rest of the premiere focuses on Castle and his quest for peaceful existence, which was an unexpected surprise. Again, uh. all of these reviews are very different. Like yeah. one mm-hmm. talks about the actor, one talks about like the bar, one talks about the tone. That's what I want in reviews. I want to know like nothing, but also be like, this sounds fantastic. Uh, so I'm fully hyped for Punisher. I know it's gonna be my whole weekend. Um, are you guys gonna try to catch up and? Yeah, I'm. A, I, it's hard for me. Like, 
binge watching because I still got to pay bills. So yeah. Like, yeah. Ah, I want to watch. Two a day. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'll watch it. All right. Let me calm down and focus and watch it. And then you get excited. And you're like, all right, I got to, I got to stop. I got to stop. I can't watch it again. But I mean, based off of what he said, just the opening minutes, you might see a fist through a forehead. Who knows? <laughs> you know, it's a bloody reminder how vicious he could be. So I think mm-hmm. maybe something catastrophic happens in those opening minutes that he's trying to reconcile like the death he of a family exactly or yeah. something that he inflicted I feel like that's part of Punisher in some way yeah like some collateral damage that he didn't expect that mm-hmm. he's trying to reconcile mm-hmm. throughout the series but I mean it's it's well done and I love his character and what he brings to it and I'm excited to see who else they might pop in yeah throughout the you know, I still want the, Midnight the, Suns man I don't think it's gonna live here but I still want Midnight Suns how yeah. about you Sabina Oh my gosh. I, I feel like I'm still just recovering from binge watching Stranger Things over like what we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. I'm going to try to pace myself out for sure. What's yeah, your, what I, you I'm going to have to pace. You're going to be out of town uh, too. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be out of town for, I'm going for like a week. I'm going to go home for Thanksgiving. It's going to be great. Yay. I haven't been home for Thanksgiving since I moved out here. Where's so, home? That's cool. Uh, Orlando, Florida. Oh, okay. So, awesome. yeah. I mean, you for here, you either choose uh, Thanksgiving or, or Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. choosing Christmas, so now I chose Thanksgiving this year. Yeah, so yeah, we'll yeah. See. Um, but yeah, no, I think I'm going to have to pace myself with it. I'm not... I'm not the kind of person that sees a lot of, for instance, war movies kind of a thing, but I do love horror movies. Um, but I'm not much for um, slasher gore yeah, kind of yeah, things. Yeah. So I'm going to have to pace it with this because not only is he damaged and deadly, mm-hmm. and I know that I'm going to be like a feeling in my heart for this character, but he's also going to be slaughtering people. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to be able to binge this in a 13-hour watch or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's a long day. That's, that's an emotional happening. day. Yeah. Yeah. I got to see it before Tuesday Maybe for two. you guys, but I'm going to try to do like two hours Thursday, two hours Friday, two hours Thursday, two hours Sunday, and then the rest Monday. Yeah. Uh, because I, I mean, I know I love these shows and I, I love, like Daredevil, I watched season two twice and season one three times and I like don't have time, but whenever I had it in a minute, I was like, more. So I feel like Punisher <laughs> might be my next like heroin uh, dive in. But uh, speaking of Netflix, the controversial decision of Disney. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like from every rumor, uh, well, you know what? Let's just go with this quote. Wall Street Journal did a whole feature on Netflix versus Disney, and Wall Street had a quote saying, while Disney currently produces Marvel superhero series such as Daredevil for Netflix, new Marvel shows in the future are expected to live on the company's own streaming service. From a business standpoint, absolutely. Yeah. Own your stuff. Yeah. From a fan standpoint, this is terrifying. They're going to yes, own my terrible. soul. I already have an annual pass for the theme park. <laughs> it's just like there's gonna be a good portion of my bill just toward Disney, Disney yeah. specifically, and that's gonna be insane. And they've been gearing up ten years, like they've been yeah. planning this. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they've been making moves. We yeah. know that they have, and it's just it's terrifying in the, because monopolies aren't great. They aren't mm-hmm. great for us. I know that people are focusing on oh great we get Fantastic Four, oh we have you know the word mutant back, oh we have X Men, you know kind of thing. And it's like yes, that that actually will be really cool, but. For the people that are saying that, and I even said this on Twitter, think about it. If the studios and everything weren't, you know, being creative with the Marvel hands that they've been dealt, how would we have gotten Guardians of the Galaxy? How would we yeah. have gotten Thor. Black Panther? How would we have gotten the, yeah. the weirdest Marvel movie? So yeah. it's like, yeah, when people have. I don't want to say less to play with. They can be more imaginative, but you've seen a kid play with a box before. Yeah, yeah but the studios also are not doing that great with the properties and IPs that they have. Like Warner Brothers is messing up the Harry Potter stuff. They could have expanded Ilvermorny, but they did not. Um, Universal is rebooting their dark universe again. I mean, like if they had any sense, they'd just give it to Blumhouse, which they've like kind of already like partnered up with. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're getting a Lord of the Rings TV show. Like their decisions are very flimsy, and I think that Disney. I'm not advocating how much of my soul has been already sold to them. Um, I don't get paid. If I got paid, my bank account would be very happy because I'm a broke <laughs> person. Um, but yeah, like they they have a way of handling these IPs that is working. And if these other studios aren't gonna like buck up and like actually try to like get the right people on it. This is what happens. Yeah, well, my my concern though too is like, I mean, from the creative standpoint, like when I heard like Shonda Rhimes is taking Shonda Land yeah. Netflix, I was like, wow, that's mm-hmm. great as a creator to be able to have that autonomy, yeah. exactly, and have the independence. But then with Disney, is like, is Disney going to Disneyfy? Right, you know, right. The Marvel movies coming out. Disney would have never put out Deadpool. Right. Ever. Never. Like, ever. They wouldn't have taken that chance. Fox would yeah. have yeah. taken that chance. It took them yeah. 10 years to get strong arms. So it's like, we but get But Disney some... also has owned, like, other uh, production companies that did put out, like, adult movies during the 90s and stuff that I feel like people are expressing that opinion where they do want, yeah. like, these 
more adult themed things. Yeah, and we know that Disney is um, taking over other properties, and that those properties have still, you know, put out their signature Good stuff. Content. I'm I'm just wondering that, you know, when you own most of everything, how do you stop from being like, you know? Let's do it this way. Exactly. Right. Checks and balances. Yeah. Are exactly. When you own every check. And do you keep yeah. using and recycling the same cast and crew that you've had that have you know like so mm -hmm. let's say if you have a slew of successful movies that you've worked with, you're are you really gonna look at other talent to come? Well, in like Tarantino's create? like he leans yeah. Miramax and stuff, and that yeah. and that's under the Disney umbrella. But if Disney got rid of Miramax entirely, would he have a place to distribute? As exactly. per now, when he's hunting, I mean, there's a bidding war in his 1969 movie, but like. Yeah that relationship's going to be different with Marvel. And that relationship... I, so I agree yeah. with what you're saying. It's yeah. just, it worries yeah. me with Netflix because these this universe they built, is it feels like one thing. Exactly. I love the tone of that. Yeah. I'm worried yeah. about it going forward losing that. Yeah. And then we're seeing Marvel properties, you know, in other, you know, venues mm -hmm. and everything. Once Disney gets a streaming service, it just all goes They're there. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Wow. <laughs> and I, I do think Disney will make R-rated things. I don't think Disney's going to, like, ignore the giant market of yeah. adult. It, that's that's mm -hmm. that's yeah. not good business, and they're great business people, as per mm -hmm. the Monopoly. Mm -hmm. the only, I'm not worried about the lack of R-rated. I'm worried about the lack of diversity in the creative teams to allow for things exactly. to feel different. Exactly. I want but they've Netflix had to feel more the same diversity in their mm -hmm. things than other studios have had so far. <laughs> No, I mean like cast. I mean like uh, if they like working with the same like ten directors, I right. want to make sure other studios, those it's, ten directors, don't lose all their jobs because that studio doesn't exist. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Um, but I mean, time will tell. This is so far just a streaming service, and it sounds like the the Netflix shows are going to live on on Netflix for a while. It's until just... 2018. Yeah. Because Disney service is up in 2019, and the Netflix Disney thing ends Expires. in 2018. Mm -hmm. Not a so concern. there's nothing to stop them from taking all of the Marvel shows in 2019. Right. But that's 2019, so. Yeah. And they might know. be developing new stuff. Um, ben Fritz, Wall Street Journal reporter, tweeted the stunning announcement that Disney confessed it was creating a new Marvel series for its streaming service. So. So far, there are no details what the series will focus on or when it will debut. Bob Iger did say the project is slated to launch in 2019, as you were mm. saying. So they're probably going to announce. I, if I was, if I was running this, I would say, hey, we know how much you love these Netflix shows. We've got these one or two on the docket. We're developing. They're half done. Look what we're doing. And then I'd be like, and by the way, your favorite shows are moving over to us. Yeah, like yep. it'd be That's like a one-two punch. Yeah, I think yeah. So. That's what's going to happen. It's like um, a smart I mean, version of what I mean. CBS tried to do with Star Trek. When they yeah. Did. So oh. they did the streaming, and I, I watched the first two episodes. I was like. This is amazing, but have I downloaded or paid for CBS streaming? No. no. It's real but for Disney, yeah. Like paywalls because, are tricky. Yeah. yeah. It, so. it can be it can be tricky, but I think Disney might be the one to be able to like we'll pull bust it off. through that because, oh, yeah. because they're Disney. Disney. And what yeah. don't they own? Like Lo Lucasfilm, by, Pixar. Right. Right. By oh, then yeah. they'll probably own, you know, Fox, you know, Fox Entertainment. They'll find a way around, you know, mm -hmm. that antitrust thing. So yeah, they're gonna own a lot. But, I mean, for the live chat, I don't think they're going to stop making R-rated stuff. I don't think that's the issue. My, no, that's my, not what we're yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about. Because uh, yeah. that came up in our, on our show two weeks ago when we talked about it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, my concern is just I don't want someone to own everything I love because then I don't feel like I get to have a say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and our final story, uh, as we are approaching wrapping up, Spider-Man is... is a, 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 <laughs> Sony owns Spider-Man, right? So that means that everything in the Spider-Man cavalcade of heroes and villains is owned by Sony. Marvel and them have a little handshake deal where they share stuff and things are figured out. But everything that's in the Spidey universe, Sony can make movies out of. They're doing their next with Morbius. Now, Morbius... <laughs> Morbius! ...is so weird. <laughs> with the, the stickers! He's a, suckers. He's a he's, suckers on his fingers. Are they going to keep that? Right, but like, Are they going to keep it? I've never understood. He's like a vampire, but he doesn't bite. He uses suckers, but he yeah. bites too. Uh, yeah. Like he's a really weird character named like his name's like Michael Mobius, and then he becomes Morbius. Um, <laughs> he's one of those like black like black bolt. Uh, but he's a really cool character if you do it right. So I really hope that Sony is learning that if you make a bunch of indie greats like Logan, like mm -hmm. Deadpool, that you can mm -hmm. make your universe shared work. And yeah. I feel like right. Fox investing will hopefully teach Sony that. And if they make this a hard R, totally out of universe, right. very unique, that will make Spider-Man better. It seems like it can go, honestly, two, two ways, because I'm a big vampire fan. I mm -hmm. lean toward, like, near dark. 
Or it could lean toward like what we do in the shadows <laughs> with like a name yeah. like Morbius the Vampire, um, which would be cool if it leaned more toward near dark for like that gritty like Absolutely. sort of feel uh, mm-hmm. with like a Catherine Bigelow like bring her in maybe. <laughs> and I really think okay. they can make something that doesn't feel like a Marvel movie or right. a Sony movie because mm-hmm. of its being independent, because of its separation from Spider Man. So this is one of the few I'm like actually glad it's removed from Spider Man because Spider Man fighting a vampire is weird. Like yeah, it, it doesn't yeah. tonally work. <laughs> so this one is a good idea I think to go hey hey, we own this character, we want to build a shared universe. Look at this crazy vampire. This, um, this caught me so <laughs> off guard. No, totally. Yeah. When, I, when I heard about this, I was like, talk about left field. I mean, what? what? Morbius? <laughs> out of out of all the characters, Morbius? And he's an we anti-hero. got a vampire, guys. Let's use him. <laughs> uh, and he's an anti-hero, so you can do a lot with it. Like 40 yeah, Days yeah. a Night I guess awesome. I'm, I'm just, I'm just not, a, I'm not a huge vampire person anymore. I felt, I felt the vampire fi- uh, fatigue, I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a, it's very difficult for me to wrap my mind around yeah. Him getting his own movie, and I'm, and I'm like thinking, oh, are they going to do something with Blade? You know, right. can we have you yeah. know because like we got Blade happen? back, so it'd be a great way to so, reintroduce. You know, that although we should that do could work. Blade's daughter. They, they talked about that like a year ago, and I was yeah. really excited yeah. about it. Uh, I hope that ever happens. Um, but I mean, I think Blade's back at Marvel, so that would be not Sony. So I don't know what that means. Like, there's so much mm. goodness rights. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of Mary Marvel light stuff, but first I need to thank the people that keep our lights on. Uh, Blue Apron, they are a delicious uh, at-home delivery food service company. They're the number one fresh ingredient recipe delivery service in the country. They have uh, used locally, what they do is they get local farms, local food sources, and they get it from the people near them, package it together, send it to you. So it's better for the environment, it's better for the people, and it's better for food. Um, they also have a much lower impact than say buying from across the country and shipping it through other food services. They know what they're doing and their food reflects that. Um, They actually have have done studies that it improves relationships amongst families that cook together. So they're trying to tie that into a global scale. So cooking together builds strong family bonds. Research shows that Blue Apron families cook three times more often. They have the upcoming um, featured meals of crispy wild Alaskan pollock with garlic mashed potatoes and roasted broccoli. This is the hardest part of the show. When I haven't eaten, I have to talk about this. Oh my God. Sounds delicious. (laughs) Also featuring cheesy broccoli baked pasta with creepy time breadcrumbs good god seared steaks and garlic butter with oven fries and romaine salad and roasted chicken and fall vegetables and cranberry and ginger compressé um this is a struggle for me uh so they basically send these amazing meals you pick out which ones you want they give you like 10 you pick out the three you want and they send it and it's for two people uh so that makes so much sense because like cook cooking for two people is difficult because usually you go to the grocery store you buy like ingredients right. and they all go bad in your refrigerator and you're just like yelling like i don't need like a Two just, handfuls of cilantro. I needed one. You know, I, just, I just need like three sprigs. And they send you that. Yeah, and they send you they that. They send you exactly yeah. what you're required for every, and everything's like an Ikea breakdown. Like you just like throw this mm-hmm. in and throw that hey. in. 450, walk away. Like it's very intuitive, which I love. Um, there's a variety of stuff. They do gluten-free, they do dairy-free, they do veggie. They, there's all sorts of stuff and it's mm-hmm. easy. Uh, I am not a cook by any means, but I've never struggled with one of these. I've never burnt one of these. It's been awesome. And they have a freshness guarantee. Because the stuff's locally sourced, there's a concern you get your food and then those three sprigs are rotten. This is not the case. They will take care of you. They also uh, do free shipping. And if you use our code, you get 30 bucks off your first order and free shipping. If you go to blueapron.com slash marvel, you, you'll love how you feel. You'll love how it tastes. It's awesome. And I do a thing. I live on my own. I have a girlfriend, but she cooks way better than me. So I cook mine for two and I give it to a homeless person. I eat with them and I learn about their life and I talk about comics with them and they have to listen um, <laughs> because I'm feeding them. So so uh, I personally, I think it's a great way to help people as well as your environment and yourself. And BlueApron.com has been very kind to us. So they'll give you 30 bucks off. BlueApron.com slash Marvel. And speaking of being kind to us, Marvelites, Marquis has a lot to say to you. Uh, yeah, I'm, actually, I'm not going to read all of these okay. names. These are these are a lot and we're kind of running on time. Um, I do want to do a shout out to a big thank you and shout out to everyone who wished Matt Key best wishes on his last show. That's why I magically manifested yeah. this today in honor of Matt. Matt's with us still. Oh, here. it was gorgeous outpouring of love. And thank you, all of you. I mean, we have like three lists of people that Ollie wrote down all these names. And thank you for, for giving that Matt love. I mean... Well, it just shows how positive and awesome our corner of the Marvel universe is. Yeah, it's so, incredible. And then always know that you can uh, keep up with Matt Key on uh, Geek and Sundry. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and follow him there. He does um, the Wednesday Club, and that's on Wednesdays. <laughs> so you so, don't conflict with us. Watch Matt on Wednesdays. Watch us on Tuesdays. <laughs> exactly. And then um, just to read a couple of things off. Mm-hmm. So uh, so Daniel Drew at Jedi Time saying, um, at Matt Key, thank you so much for staying with Marvel Movie News as long as you have. I'm going to miss you on this show very much. 
Like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then at Low Rosario, uh, at Low Rosario, thank you at the Matt Key for your love and passion for all this time. You will be missed. Know the show is in good hands. You better pop in and give us Doctor Strange reactions when needed. Yeah, we boy. That's coming. We expect you. Yes. Yes, indeed. And then uh, from Mrs. Key, <laughs> uh, Brittany Wallach, uh, congratulations to my love at the Matt Key on his final episode hosting at Marvel Movie News today. You should be so proud of what you built, and I can't wait to see what Geek and Sundry brings into your life. It's going to be yeah, fantastic. I love that. Okay, so questions. <laughs> So Ashley Houchins, uh, Mark Ruffalo has been pretty outspoken about Universal Studios and them not playing ball with Marvel. Exactly what does he mean about the new plans with the Hulk? So, mm. well, I think he's uh, spoken about during like the Thor Ragnarok uh, press junkets that mm -hmm. they're basically splitting his arc into three different movies. And first, uh, first of it being on like Thor Ragnarok and exploring that whole thing, but um, it just seems like it's just going to be broken up into two other movies as we yeah. go forward. Infinity War and Avengers right. 4. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, also with this, I mean, one of the reasons why we haven't had a Hulk standalone movie is because it's a rights issue. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, why are they going to put out a Marvel, uh, a Hulk movie when basically that money's going to go into somebody else's pocket? They're just yeah. not going to do it. So they're just going to have him part of other movies. So until that changes, you know, that's basically why you're not getting your Hulk standalone movie. Um, and then we, uh, we, oh wow, we actually answered this. Oh, um, the Lonely Wakandan at Lonely Wakandan. Could the Morbius solo movie be a way to introduce Blade to the MCU? I think Blade's so. It's yeah. he, Blade's either at Marvel or mm -hmm. he's in between New Line, Fox, and Marvel. So either right. way, that's yeah. not Sony. Like he's yeah. stuck in limbo or he's at Marvel. So, Unfortunately. Yeah, I think I think he's New Line. I think he was I New Line. Yeah. I don't know if okay. he still is because I don't know if New Line still is. I I don't know. <laughs> I have. Yeah, that's true. I think the last New Line movie I saw was Blade. Yeah, so. like when I think of that logo, it's like a very '90s nostalgic. Like yeah. this is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, um, Eli Mack at Mr. Eli Mack, he uh, he wanted us to put this out, and it's like, and yes, it seems I I wasn't aware of this. So he says, I know it's mid November, but can I get a shout out for Epilepsy Awareness Month? Um, I have epilepsy, and I really want awareness for it to be spread out there. It's not a popular awareness month but it needs attention mm. Absolutely. so yeah, yeah, yeah I was not aware of this you know thank you for you know giving me that knowledge and yes I'll definitely be aware and read up read mm -hmm. up a little bit on that and then uh, for this I was saving this for the end <laughs> because this is just super fun so um, oh goodness who the person I don't have the person's name here of who this is I think it was um, uh, Bino um uh, underscore V underscore R O C H. Um, and I think right now their name is Tree Walker. I think that's who this is. But they say, hey guys, I'd love to get a wrestling promo birthday shout out for November 16th. I'm turning 38. Um, hashtag Marvel for Life. Thanks guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. I really hope that that's the person that I'm supposed to do that to and not somebody else. But uh, yeah. How do you uh, Koi, do a wrestling do a promo? And wrestling, how can I help you? Wrestling promo. Uh, it's basically. We're both wrestlers, right? And we're both um, cutting promos. Benoit for... V. Roke. Benoit v. So Tree it was Walker Benoit v. at Benoit v. I just want to make sure. Clarify. Oh, my memory is oh, on hey. point. Got you. Yeah, so basically just picture yourself as wrestler. Okay. Like you're Hulk Hogan. Everybody can join <laughs> in on this. And we're basically <laughs> cutting a promo for this guy's birthday. All right. Yeah, he's in. All right, so uh, what was his name? Bino? Bino, B, uh, Benoy, B, B Roke. Bino! V Roke! Yeah, so we hear it's your birthday! Huh? Happy birthday, man! So we're turning Happy birthday. 38! 38. 38's a great year, two no, from 40! Yeah, that's only two more away from that big decade! It's so close to stuff. Thanksgiving, you're gonna have some sweet potato pie, some pumpkin pie. You're gonna eat all the food because it's gonna be basically your birthday! You got like 12 years till you're 50! <laughs> yeah. Now Anthony's gonna get us out! Your mashed potato, turkey leg eating, Thanksgiving rambling. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Woo! True Walker! <laughs> Shout out to my mom, too. It's her birthday on the 15th. So, hey. Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday, Anthony's mom. Hey. My subconscious thinks that wrestling is like big truck jumping, like demolition derby. <laughs> like, my mom's like, get no yell stuff! Yeah, I was giving some of the people's eyebrow because I learned how to raise my eyebrow things to the rock. Oh, that's fair. Uh, uh, wrestling cannon. Yeah. That's totally a place. 
Uh, so I think that's all of the madness for the day. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, I want to thank everyone that gave Matt Key all those uh, well wishes as well. Yeah. Uh, we're going to miss him dearly on the show. I, I wore this today in his honor because uh, I it's, it's a... It's a much lower seat than me in it, because he's a very tall man, but I, I much loved Matt Key. He's going to do great at Geek and Sundry, um, and we miss him already, uh, mm -hmm. and I will make sure I do whatever I can to connect you guys as much as possible, and Marquis and I will do whatever we can to make sure the show does not slump entirely without him. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, he's a very wise man. So, uh, once again, I've been Coy Jondro, at C-O-Y-J-A-N-D-R-E-A-U. And I'm Markeia McCarty at M-A-R-K-E-I-A-M-C-C-A-R-T-Y. Uh, you can find actually me and Koi this Thursday. We're going to be on Game Talk Live doing a new game called You've Got Problems. So <laughs> Intrigued already. Yes. Check us out there. And also check out uh, my Screen Junkies thing just sit on Monday where we talk all things Punisher. And I do that with Jay Washington and Dana uh, Danielle Radford. Uh, along with Joe Star. Joe so. Star. It's Joe Star. You've just got to. So uh, go ahead and check that. And I have those links on my Twitter. Or if I don't, I will soon. <laughs> Where do they find you guys? Uh, this is Anthony Rose. It's been a pleasure to be here. You can find me at Aunt Rose CEO across the universe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's been really great this is awesome you guys and you can find me on twitter at sabina has no r i'm usually hanging out with the guys over at superhero news sean gerber and mark hughes weekly with trailer reactions and uh hopefully some justice league action coming up soon fantastic awesome. everybody go see justice league this weekend and everyone watch the punisher and just enjoy the craziest comic book weekend i can think of oh that's I insane yeah. so yeah enjoy 15.2 hours of content and Oof. i will see you guys on tuesday have a great week hey. bye, bye. <laughs> From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. Views expressed here to those of the host only, not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners and principals.